but went our separate ways. One day, about a year before my graduation, he gave me a lift, and we had a long conversation and shared a good laugh. Then he said to me, Era, you see, we are meant for each other. That was the beginning of a long-lasting relationship. George became the big brother I didn't have. He was funny and had a great sense of humor. He became my mentor and confidant. He understood me. In fact, he had greater confidence in me than I had in myself. He encouraged me to accept every opportunity that came my way and wanted me to see it as part of God's grand plan. We traveled across countries, including Australia, where he made sure that we visited Adelaide, the city that bears my name. I thank God for giving me such a wonderful husband. We were blessed with six wonderful children, namely Kwejo, Ama, Nana Jumbo, Parkwesi, Adelaide Mamiya, Antoinette, and also 17 grandchildren. He impressed on all of them that education was a key in life, and they did not disappoint him. George loved his country and the university. He was ready to sacrifice his time, energy, and resources for the country. A classic case was when times were hard in the country and most of the professionals were leaving, leaving the country to seek greener pastures. The university was almost depleted of lectures, lecturers. The family was also urging him to seek an appointment abroad. His response was, if I go, who will remain at the geography department? Someone has to hold the fort. Of course, the children and I were very disappointed. Even as a vice chancellor, he was reluctant to enjoy the benefits to which he was entitled, much to the dismay of the family. In fact, the illness that incapacitated him for these past 20 years occurred in Mozambique, where he went to negotiate for a grant worth millions of dollars for the investors in Ghana. He was thrilled afterwards when he was informed that the grant approved. I remember the threat to his life during his time as Minister of Lands and Natural Resources when he wanted to streamline land sales in Accra. I remember the trauma he went through being sent in and out of prison the period of his ailment. He received numerous awards and honors, including two more honorary doctorates from the University of Ghana and University of Development Studies. He received awards from power, and he also received the highest award of the nation, the Order of the Star of Ghana, conferred on him by ex-president Ajekum Kufu. Even though he fell sick two months after our daughter Amma's wedding, he witnessed the marriages of all the other five children, 
and his 17 grandchildren were born during the period of his illness. It was during this time that he published his autobiography, My Time, My Nation. The Lord is a wonderful God, and we cannot thank him enough. I want to take this opportunity to mention just a few of the people who were very helpful and kind to George during his illness. I want to thank former President Kufu, who gave permission to George to be sent to UK to Reading Clinic. The initial care was so crucial, and I have no doubt that the treatment and rehabilitation received played a very big part in, in his survival for so many years. I also want to thank Professor Paul Nyami for his support, especially during that period and throughout his illness. To Dr. Albert Apalu, who was his personal medical doctor for the entire 20 years, we are very grateful. Indeed, he was a doctor who accompanied us on the United Kingdom trip. We are indeed grateful for his patience and professionalism. We wish to thank also the two nursing agencies, Elite and Elion, who have been helpful. We are also very grateful to one outstanding nurse who deserves special mention. His name is Asiedu. George's Achimota classmates were very supportive. During their visits, they would make him laugh to raise his spirits up. Our sincere gratitude to the Catholic priests and Eucharistic ministers who religiously visited our home on Sundays to administer communion to George on the occasions he could not attend Mass. In fact, we are indebted to so many people who made life easier for us during the challenging times. The list is endless but we are very, very grateful to all of them, and they know themselves. To our children, George and I were extremely grateful for their continuous love and support. We were fortunate to have extraordinary children who ensured that we lacked for nothing. George, you served your country well, and we are very proud of you. Separation is difficult, even though we knew the day would come. I take consolation in the fact that you had strong faith in God and trusted him till the end. Divine mercy was always on your lips. We have no doubt that you are with your maker and smiling down at us. George, this is Melbourne, your covenant wife. I will miss you terribly. Fare thee well until we meet again. Thank you. The president will now file past the remains of Professor Bene. The poor bearers should be ready to cover the casket after the filing pass. Chire mi kwan, chire mi kwan, e jo ya mie. Chire mi kwan, chire mi kwan, na ma ira. E hi na ye The poor bearers, please cover the casket. 
We shall now compose ourselves in readiness for the Mass. Please put off your mobile phones or place them on silence. Let us all turn to the brochure on page 114. We shall take him 308. 308. O Christ, the glory of the angel choirs, author and ruler of the human race, grant us one day to climb the happy hills and see your blissful face. Hymn 308 on page 114 of the brochure. The choir will lead us.
Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. peace be with you. Please eat it. On behalf of Most Reverend John Bodanvetia Kofi, Metropolitan Archbishop of Accra, and the Bennett family, we welcome all of you to the cathedral. We welcome in a special way His Excellency Nana Adudankwa Akufuado, the President of the Republic and his entourage here to mourn and pray with the family. We also invite, we also welcome most Reverend Osel Bonsu, the Bishop of Konongumampon, who will be the main celebrant. Again, we welcome Andrew Campbell, the parish priest of our dear father and brother, join us in this celebration. Once again, I say you are welcome to the, uh, bish the Bishop of Konongumampon to lead us in this celebration. My Lord, Brothers and sisters in Christ, we come together as members of God's family to worship Him and to praise Him. We know that we are not worthy to be in God's presence. Let us pause for a few moments and call mind our sons and ask God for pardon and mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have great listen in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I have the blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Merciful grant that through this mystery, your servant, George Bennett, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Shall we please take our seats as we listen to the reading?
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We would not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others, as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, ever so through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, shall not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. The word of God. The choir will lead us in singing the responsorial psalm. Psalm 23. of my foes, my 
my head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life in the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever Nothing I shall want. Shall we please rise for the gospel acclamation? The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When Jesus came to Bethany, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary sat in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, 
I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, he who is coming into the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Shall we please take our seats? Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Ghana, Your Grace, Metropolitan Archbishop of Accra, my dear people of God, as we meet here today, we sorrow in our hearts to say goodbye to Emeritus Professor George Kabina Ifa Bene. I would like to extend my condolences and the condolences of the Ghana Charlie Bishop's conference to his widow, Adelaide, to their children and grandchildren, and to the rest of the family. My condolences also go to the people of Jamdede and Berikum, to the people of Adelaide's hometown. Irrangering a month room to the church members of the Christ the King Parish together with the parish priest, Father Campbell. So that's where Professor Bene was a parishioner. My condolences also go to colleagues and friends from the University of Ghana, Legon, from other sister universities, and indeed, to everyone here this morning. May the good Lord console all of us in our grief and strengthen us in our faith. We thank the Lord for the life of Professor Bene. God blessed him and his wife, Adelaide, with six children and 17 grandchildren, and they did their best to bring their children up in the practice of the faith. We also thank God for the active role that Professor Bene played in the church. He was an active member of the Noble Order of the Knight of Marshall, where he rose to the rank of past Supreme Knight. He was also very active in the Laity Council and in fact became the first General Secretary of the National Laity Council. He was also the Deputy Chairman of the Planning Committee for Pope John Paul II's visit to Ghana in 1980. He was also a patron of the Christ the King Parish Choir and a patron of the St. Vincent de Paul Society at the University of Ghana, Legon. In view of his immense contribution to the church, he was awarded the papal honor of Pontifical Equestrian Order of St. Gregory the Great. His contribution to academia and to the nation was also immense. And you will find the information about this in the brochure. My dear people of God, the death of Professor Bene confronts us once again with the mystery of death, the strange phenomenon that suddenly brings our earthly life to a close. The death of someone should be the occasion for us all to reflect on our lives as human beings. What is this life that we are living? And what at all are we doing in this world? 
Where have we come from? And where are we going? My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, now that we are going to say goodbye to Professor Bene, he would like us, he would like me to draw your attention to five things. The first is that death will certainly come to all of us. Professor Bene says that he has climbed the ladder of death, but would like us all to know that we will climb the same ladder one day. He says that just as he is lying here today, surrounded by many people, we too will one day experience the same thing with a priest or a bishop preaching a funeral homily. Because death is waiting for everyone, he wants us to reflect on what the psalmist says in Psalm 89, verse 48. Who can live and never see death? He says, that should also reflect on what Ecclesiastes says. For everything, there is a season and a time for every matter, every matter under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 to 2. In a similar vein, he would like us to reflect on what William Shakespeare says in Julius Caesar, namely, death a necessary end will come when it will come. You all must have heard of Michael Jackson, who was known as the king of pop. Michael Jackson wanted to live for 150 years. So he appointed 12 doctors at home who will daily examine him from hair to toenails. His food was always tested in the laboratory before it was served. Another 15 people were appointed to look after his daily exercise and workout. His bed had the technology to regulate the oxygen level. Organ donors were kept ready so that whenever needed, they immediately donate their organs. The maintenance of these doctor, uh, donors was taken care of by him. He was proceeding with a dream of living for 150 years. He did this for about 25 years, but alas, he failed. At the age of 50, he sat, stopped functioning. The constant effort of the 12 doctors did not work. Even the combined efforts of the doctors from Los Angeles and other parts of California could not save him. My dear people of God, death will come when it will come. It will come to everyone. It will come to men, to women, the young, the old, lay people, priests, bishops, students, doctors, professors, presidents, and so on. We may reach 100 years or more, but what is certain is that we shall die one day. Professor Bennett says that his death should be a reminder to all of us of this fact. The second thing that Professor Bennett would like us to reflect on, my dear brothers and sisters, is the transitory nature of human life. Man is here today and tomorrow he is gone. The psalmist speaks of the transitory nature of human life when he says, as for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower of the field, for the wind passes over it and it is gone, and this place knows it no more. Psalm 103, 15, and 16. Elsewhere, the psalmist says that men are like a dream, like a grass which is renewed in the morning. In the morning, it flourishes and is renewed. In the evening, it fades and withers. Psalm 95 and 6. During the 86 years that he lived in this world, Professor Bene <laughs> interacted in many ways, with many people. So his parents, brothers and sisters, relatives, friends, parishioners, fellow lecturers and professors, priests, bishops, presidents, and so on. He spoke with us, attended church with us, lodged with us, ate with us, drank with us, and so on. I had the chance to interact with him on many occasions. When he was a professor and later a vice chancellor, and when I was a lecturer and a chaplain 
at the University of Ghana. It was during his tenure as Vice Chancellor that the Catholic community and the Lagoon International Church got plots of land to build their churches. I had the privilege of visiting him in his office many times, of meetings of the academic board, and visiting him and his family at home. I had the privilege of officiating at the wedding of his daughter, Dr. Ama Anima Bena Kwesi Kuma, with Mr. Joa Kwesi Kuma on 23rd June 2001. I visited him many times after he came down with a stroke on 16th August 2001. Now, all my interactions with him, like yours, are over. He had disappeared from our midst. Suddenly, like the grass or the flower of the field, whose morning freshness and beauty disappear in the evening, Professor Bender has disappeared from our midst in the evening of his life. He says that at the moment, he just lies in this coffin in this cathedral church, quiet, still, motionless. He says that death has laid its icy hands on him, and so we will not see him again in the land of the living. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in view of the transitory nature of human life, Professor Bender is telling us that there's a need for us to be ready at all times to face death. Death will come like a thief in the night. It will come when we are not ready. In view of this, he says we should always be ready for death. The third thing that Professor Bene wants us to reflect on is that we shall be judged when we die. And for this reason, there is a need for us to lead good lives. Professor Bene is drawing our attention this morning to Hebrews 9.27, which says, it is appointed for mortals to die once, and after that comes the judgment. In the same way, he is drawing our attention to 2 Corinthians 5.10, where St. Paul tells us, for all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense for what, he has, for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. Professor Bena is also drawing our attention to Matthew 25, 31 to 46, which says that on the last day, the Son of Man, or Christ, will come and will judge people on the basis of what they did or did not do for their fellow human beings, who were hungry, thirsty, naked, sick, in prison, and so on. Professor Bene says we should, we should carefully read this passage from Matthew and put it into practice. He says that he also is going to be judged by God, and so we need to pray for him so that God will be merciful in his judgment. He says he finds consolation in the words of the psalmist. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that it may be revered. Psalm 130, 3-4. The fourth thing that Professor Bene would like us to reflect on is the need for all of us to be steadfast in our faith, in spite, in spite of illnesses and afflictions, that we may have to endure. He knew what suffering is, having suffered a stroke, as I've already said, and he had to live with it for some 20 years. His parting message to us is that we should realize that suffering is part of our human condition. It is part of the cross that we have to bear as followers of Jesus. So in this connection, Professor Bene would like us also to reflect on two passages from St. Paul that talk about illness. Corinthians 5.12, where St. Paul says that a thorn was given him in the flesh, a messenger of Satan, to harass him, to keep him from being too proud. This was undoubtedly some physical disease that St. Paul suffered from. The second is on 2 Corinthians 4.10, which says, we bear in our body the sufferings of the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be seen in our body. 
Even in his illness, Professor Bende was able to write his autobiography entitled, My Time, My Nation, by means of a tape recorder which recorded whatever he had to say. And these recordings were later transcribed by someone. He did not let his handicap get the better of him. In his sickness and suffering, he's reminding us of the redemptive nature of suffering and encouraging those of us who are suffering to accept the cross of physical affliction and to bear it with faith if healing does not come in spite of our prayers. The fifth and last thing that Professor Bene would like us to reflect on, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, is our faith in the resurrection. This is what gives meaning to our lives as Christians. He says that in a time like this, we need to affirm our faith in the resurrection. Without faith in the resurrection, our life in this world, with all its problems and frustrations, will be meaningless and purposeless. Professor Bene says that in this life, he says that it is this faith in the resurrection that helped him in his illness and sufferings. Indeed, for those who do not believe in the re resurrection, death is the end, the end of the road of life. For them, life is meaningless and purposeless. Such people may indeed share the following sentiment expressed about life in Shakespeare's Macbeth, where we read, life is but a walking shadow, a poor player, that struts and frets his hour upon the stage, and then he said, no more. It is a, a tale told by, by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. But then, we Christians believe in the resurrection, which gives meaning and purpose to our lives. When we lose a dear one in death, we are naturally sad because we shall not see that person again. While we have every reason to be sad, as Christians, we should not grieve like those in Paul speaks in the first week come after him in the kingdom of Jesus who said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Those who do the prayer of the faithful, please come up to the sanctuary. Brothers and sisters in Christ, let us now stand and present our needs and the needs of all God's people to God our Father. delivered the three young men from the blazing furnace 
free the soul of our dear father from the punishment his sins deserve. For this, let us pray to the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let us now pray for a few moments in silence for our own personal intentions. Gracious and loving Father, you are the source of all love and goodness, and you know goodness who created us and you look after us. We thank you for your many gifts and blessings, and we ask you this morning to grant us all our requests. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Shall we please take our seats? It's now time to give our offering. The choir will lead us in singing medley of songs. Please, when you are coming, come along with your valuables. Don't leave your valuables on the pews. Please give generously. Thank you.
solemn sacrifice begins. The lamb is offered for our sins. He lies upon his To give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, the memorial of his death and resurrection. We hope but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. It's now time for communion. I want to remind all of us that communion is meant for practicing Catholics who have prepared themselves. The rest of us will join the choir in singing hymn 104 on page 114. Oh Lord, I am not worthy that you should come to me, but speak the word, all oh, powerful, and my soul then shall hear him. 104 on page 114.
the choir will now give us a solo.
Let us pray. Lord, whose son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our brother George may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Shall we please take our seats? We shall take a second collection to support the family. Please give generously. The ashes will direct us. The choir will lead us in singing medley of songs. Thank you.
of separation, the widowhood right. May I kindly invite the widow and a supporter or two to accompany her to come up to the sanctuary for the widowhood right. travelers. You never fail to go on journeys with those who believe in you. You watch over Israel by day, by the pillar of cloud, and by night by the pillar of fire. So now be the companion and guide of Adelaide, the departed wife of her brother George, as she was through the valley of death, that she may reach his family home safely. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. So we now bless the rosary and the medal that will be put around her neck. Lord God, our help and guide, you sent your son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for the salvation of all mankind. Send your blessing upon this cross and this medal so that as your maid servant Adelaide wears it, she may be freed from all harm and danger and come to enjoy your saving protection through Christ our Lord. Let us pray. God of mercy and compassion, defender of widows and widowers and father of orphans, hear our prayers for your maidservant Adelaide. You have united man and woman in a bond of marriage which nothing except death can separate. Now that death has taken away our brother George and separated him 
from your maid servant Adelaide. You have also ended their marriage bond between them forever. We ask you now to bless your daughter Adelaide, protect and guide her from all harm, deliver her from all fears, worries, and anxieties, from suspicion, despair, dreams, and the powers of darkness. Your son Jesus Christ, the Lord of life, by his death on the cross, destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection from the dead, restored us to life. He sent the Holy Spirit to us as a comforter and healer. May the same Holy Spirit, the consoler of the afflicted, the healer of mind and soul and of broken hearts, overshadow your daughter Adelaide at this moment of grief, to wipe, wipe away her tears and to strengthen her. Lord, in your mercy, draw her closer to yourself and be with her and be her constant companion throughout her life. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So we ask the family, the children, the children to stay. We have this token from the church to present it to you. We pray that this token will at least defray some of your costs of this funeral. So we ask the elder son to take it. Um, Father, the, the family has decided that we would like to donate the offering to the church to support any church activity. Thank you. Thank you very much. May God bless you. May I kindly call on a family member to come and give the vote of thanks. Your Excellency, Nana Ado Dankwa Ekufuado, President of the Republic of Ghana, my Lord Archbishop Bonaventure Kofi, Metropolitan Archbishop of Accra, His Grace Bishop Joseph Osaibonsu, Bishop of Konongo, Father Clement Wilson, the Administrator of the Cathedral, clergy here present, the Vice Chancellor of the University of Ghana, Dr. Ebenezer Udru, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the Word of God admonishes us that in all things we should give thanks. And to this end, we want to thank the Almighty for His grace, for Daddy's life, and for how far He has brought us all. Your Excellency, Nanado Dankwa Epufuado, delegation from the presidency. We want to thank you so much for your continuous support, for taking time out of your busy shadow to come and mourn with us. We are so grateful. Archbishop Bonaventure, Bishop Osaibonsu, we cannot thank you enough for the support you continue to give us as a family. We are indeed truly grateful. We also want to thank the entire Catholic fraternity for your support, prayers, and love. It's been so overwhelming, and we are indeed very grateful. Provost and all the university community, we are truly blessed to have you. Thank you for your support. You have really been a blessing to the family. 
I would also want to acknowledge and thank the delegation from Ocheheng, Nana Mwetia Uforipeni, led by Nana Hema, Nana Dokua Edutumwa, and Osari Berry Mafo. We are indeed very grateful to have you and the entire delegation. To the Governor of Bank of Ghana, Mr. Addison, and to the entire delegation from Bank of Ghana, we are truly grateful. To all members, to the President and all members of the Academy of Sciences, Daddy loved you so much, and you have indeed shown your love for us, and we are really grateful. To the Marshallans, thank you so much for all that you do for us. Papal awardees, we are grateful. To the choir, Christ the King and Cathedral, we are so grateful. To the mass service, thank you so much. MC, we are very grateful. To all the protocol, thank you so much. For the ushers, for the ushers, it's a weekday, but you are here, and we are indeed very grateful. For the people who have cleaned up the church ready for us, we are grateful. For all the security officials, Thank you so much. For all those who have worked behind the scenes throughout Daddy's life, especially his last 20 years, thank you. Whatever wakes you up tomorrow morning, please know that the entire Bene and Allied families are saying thank you. Thank you so much for your love. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your support during this very difficult time. We are indeed very grateful, and may the good Lord bless you all. Thank you very much. At this time, as we convey Daddy to Brekum, we would ask that you please step to my left when you leave the church to pick up a refreshment, and please be mindful of social distancing. We will have a thanksgiving service when we come from Brekum at Christ the King Church on the 4th of April. Thank you all so much for your time, for your love, and your support. God bless you. Thank you. May I kindly acknowledge the presence of the following. Nana Edum Chua. Dukuya Ochinhima Nana Mapu Kwabreni Chebi Abontando Hima Esi Dua Hene Dasibre Esmendu Sechi Chebi Chendon Hima Nana Ahene Bua Ochinhini Yiri Nanadwa Asabia. I take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see our dear father again, enjoy his friendship. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ.
our response to our psalm is, receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to his aid. Hasten to meet him, angels of the Lord. May Christ lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. Let us pray. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our dear father, Professor George Hagen, in the sure hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him in the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon our dear father in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship which is the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn and grant pardon to our father George. George Benny, sorry. And listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with the assurance of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our dear Father forever. We ask you this through Christ. So the Paul bearers please come forward. Let us all turn towards the coffin and raise your right hands as a sign of farewell as we bid our dear Father George farewell and grant him his blessing and grace. May the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you. May they take you to the holy city, to the new and eternal Jerusalem. May the choirs of angels welcome you and lead you to the bosom of Abraham, where Lazarus is poor no longer may you find eternal rest angels lead you on hold you come to who sits above the seraphim come to the peace of abraham and to the supper of the lamb come to the glory of the blessed and to perpetual light and rest May the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, to the new and eternal Jerusalem. To the bosom of Abraham, where Lazarus is poor no longer. <laughs>
as announced earlier, the presidency follow, followed by the family. The presidency will follow, followed by the family, the wife, children, and immediate family members. Then the queen mothers and chiefs. The Queen Mothers and Chiefs, please follow. The rest of us, be in your pews. You'll be directed, please. The protocol team will direct you. Just be in your pews. Please sit, take your seats, please. Sit comfortably, you'll be directed. Nobody should move, please. Dames and knights, you can also follow. Knights and dames. The martial arts will follow the knights and dames. Protocol team, I leave the, the rest of the order to you so that you direct the congregation. Protocol team, where are you? I think we move pew by pew. I think now we can use the side doors for our exits, use the side doors. Thank you very much for cooperating with us.